Good morning everybody, it's um, Thursday the 7th of May and uh, I thought at such a beautiful morning this morning I would do morning prayer from the garden. Um, it's a little bit chilly, it's early yet, so uh, the sun's not quite here but it's, it's very lovely. Uh, the birds are singing, I expect you can hear. Um, we've been very so blessed with the weather, haven't we, in this time that we have been able to get outside um, even if we haven't got gardens, we've been able to, to walk outside and that's um, been quite a blessing, I think, for a lot of us. Anyway, so morning prayer this morning. I'll um, just let you know what the readings are because, again, I will read uh, the Gospel reading and, and the other readings you might like to read yourselves at home. So the psalm set for de today is Psalm 118, 118. And the Old Testament reading is from Exodus. Um, slightly um, long-winded, it's 34, 1 to 10, and then 27 to the end. Um, I always hate it when they break the readings, but uh, that's what's set for today. 34, 1 to 10, and then verse 27 to the end of the chapter. And um, the, the Gospel reading was, will be from Luke, and that's Luke 4. 1 to 13. As, as I said, I'll, I'll read that. So on this beautiful sunny morning, let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. May Christ, the true and only light, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. You have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. You have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, and Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. And so I'll read to you now uh, the Gospel set for today, um, which is Luke 4, 1 to 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give you their glory and all this authority. For it is been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down for here, from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you and protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. 
temptations. One of those readings again that we hear at the beginning of Lent. And again, we're thinking them through again as we nearer, become nearer to Ascension and the time of Pentecost. So temptations. I wonder what temptations we have learnt through this lockdown. What have we learnt about ourselves and the way that perhaps we are tempted? So let's look at those three temptations um, that we hear about this morning. Stones into bread, food. I don't know about you, but we're, we're a very foodie family. Um, we always use food for our celebrations. Um, hospitality is a, is a big thing in our family. Um, anything to celebrate and it's a meal. Um, a time just to get together and to eat together and uh, talk over the table. And I have to admit that quite often this is out. We do this out in restaurants, which is quite expensive. And perhaps, um, perhaps we're tempted a little too often to do that, or maybe to get takeaways and things. So I think during this lockdown period, we've we've learnt what's what's important. Well, getting together is important. I, I miss a family that I'm not able to see in person though of course we can do this sort of thing which we're so lucky to be able to do aren't we um, but maybe the temptation of overeating over ordering over going out maybe that's something we will look at and and see perhaps more cooking less eating out um, a very simple temptation um, but um, maybe you think of your of your own that might relate to that what about that one, that temptation where um, the devil takes Jesus and shows him the world and says, you can have all this power as long as you worship me, selling our souls to the devil. So I wonder if we do do that. Well, not literally. I hope you haven't ever sold your soul to the devil. Um, but maybe we are guilty of idolatry of worshipping something that isn't God. Um, maybe in some cases, and we can certainly see that around the world, power struggles and governments and, um, and just the wanting of more. But maybe on a smaller scale, that wanting of more. You know, we're so lucky, most of us in this country, to be quite well off when we compare the rest of the world. And what do we do with that money? Do we go to our local rather nice shops and spend more money because we're worth it? Um, do we spend money on bigger and better things when actually we should be sharing it more? There are people around the world who are suffering far greater than we are, even now in lockdown. Um, and we should be sharing that money more. Maybe we, we do worship. Um, the shops and consumerism a little bit too much. Something to ponder on. And so that final one when the devil takes Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple and says, throw yourself down because you'll be saved. What's that one all about? Well, I think maybe perhaps a bit more about the way we pray or the, may the way we think of God. He isn't a magician. Everything suddenly won't be right if we pray, even if we pray really hard. And we have seen that in some um, American churches where they, um, they've said that they are very faithful and pray all the time so they won't get ill. And of course many of them have got ill and sadly some have died. Um, but on a lesser scale, you know, we, we, we pray daily for those things, don't we? Oh, please God, let this happen. Please God, don't let that happen. And maybe that's not the way of life. There is a circle of life. We were sadly born to die. But God promises us something beyond that and promises to be with us through all our trials and troubles of life, which can be very difficult at times. And the suffering when we lose people we love. But we have that hope, don't we? That there is more to life. Perhaps a beautiful garden, maybe slightly better tended than this garden. Um, but 
He's not a magician. Things won't just happen if we pray hard. But we can pray for what God wants us to do and just put ourselves in his hands and just say, God, your will, as we say when we pray. Your will, not ours. And trust in him that he will lead us into the right direction, whatever our hopes and fears may be. So let's pray now. So Father in heaven, we pray for all people in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your church worldwide in so many places where people cannot gather together, but where your church lives, because your church is the people. So we pray for all Christian people around the world, in their millions, for all who are suffering, for all who are leading them. We pray for our own benefits here in Ampfield and Chilworth and North Baddersley. We pray for all those people we would normally see on a Sunday morning. We pray for our deanery in Romsey, for James, our area dean, for our bishops, Tim, Debbie, and David, and the life of the church in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for nations around the world, for all who take authority to serve them. We pray for all those places who are suffering from this coronavirus, for the leaders that are trying their best. And we pray for all those places that have dropped from our news that we're not hearing about, where there is war still, where there is conflict, where there has been natural disaster. We pray for any who are suffering at this time, where there is poverty. And we pray that you would strengthen leaders of all nations with gifts of wisdom, courage, and integrity, that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of those who are in our own hearts and minds, all those we are worried about, we pray for all of those in our families who are doctors and nurses who are working for the NHS, who are on the front lines. We pray for all of those who are keeping our shops open, keeping our services. We pray for the police force, for those who are delivering to us, for those who are keeping us well. And of course we pray for all of those whom we know are unwell at the moment. For all of those at home unwell and those in hospital. And we name those in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so Lord, we remember with thanksgiving those who have died. We think of all those whose funerals have taken place in the last week or in the coming week. And we ask that you strengthen all who mourn with the sure hope that in Christ their loved ones will be raised to the fullness of life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, collecting all our prayers together and saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And just before we go, the collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So may the risen Christ grant you the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. God bless you this week.